I am deeply humbled by the honor the Girl Scout Council has bestowed upon me and just maybe a little embarrassed because like every experience throughout my life, I believe I gained so much from the doing and I'm surprised that any other award should be necessary. I have so many blessings. My high school sweetheart, Joel, who despite my fierce need to be independent, I was wise enough to marry, and our two incredible children, Harris and Stephanie, my support system of wonderful family and amazing friends. And now I have this award and I'm so very appreciative. Thank you, Toby Hollenberg, for nominating me and thank you all very much. My journey is sprinkled with a few activities that, in retrospect, are less than honorable. For example, growing up before Title IX gave young women the opportunity to participate fully in sports activities, I was sure that there was life after jump rope. My friends and I were lucky that our fourth grade teacher didn't suspect that we were the ones who put the worm in the water glass, which diverted her attention long enough so that we could play some punch ball. So I learned early that working in community might serve well to come up with solutions to solve problems of injustices and inequality that individually I might have not have had the courage to try otherwise. But I felt guilty enough that I decided in the future to temper my community activism with a little more restraint and to think independently to include the ethical ramifications of my own actions while I tried to support various causes. Thank goodness that was our only crime. And then in my public school, peer pressure was the competition to succeed. Later, as a young teacher, I worked with children that the school called handpicks, children that other teachers, the school, and their board had deemed unteachable. I found that they were also susceptible to peers, but for drugs and crime, because in those ga gangs, they found acceptance. But that was not who they were. And when I was flexible with the curriculum and the methodology, they became proud of their accomplishments and they accomplished so much. If I've learned anything from my chosen career as an educator, it's that when I think I know something, I usually don't. And when I'm certain I know something, when I'm proven wrong, the lessons I learn will change me for the better. I learned so very much from those students. And though I had supported myself from an early age, my trials seemed to pale in comparison to their challenges. I was just sure years ago I was going to go to law school and that teaching was a path to get the money I needed to put myself through school. My students had such great needs back then and no money to pay for the day-to-day -day extras that come with participating in activities. After six months, I added two part-time jobs to keep myself and teaching my students in after-school drama, debate, dance events, and after a year, another two. I never was able to afford law school, but I never found teaching a lost dream. Just an opportunity. And in a way, through my participation as a mother, a Girl Scout, a Boy Scout leader, and as a founder of a cultural arts agency, I'm still finding ways to enrich my horizons through new experiences. And each time someone or some organization asks me if I can figure out a way to do this or do that, I'm in that classroom all over again trying new approaches to learn something of value from the experience and in the process teach others what I've learned. I was just sure that I would be a performer. But instead, I found that creating opportunities for others to perform work better for me. Each experience becomes part of who I am. I find that if I teach it, I learn it better. If I use it, I adapt it to suit my needs. And if I can improve on a method and pass it on, then I can move on to repeat the process again. I used to believe that one needed to reinvent themselves every few years in order to grow like a caterpillar cocooning until they spread their butterfly wings to fly. But not all metamorphoses come on schedule that beautifully or with that regularity. My own children and their friends are grown now, but I still surround, surround myself with talented young people. They often have vision but no means, and they're inventing themselves before my very eyes. Though I mentor them, watching them discover a skill is invaluable to me, for it reminds me to see possibilities in the impossible. And that if I can dream something, it may be possible, even if I do not yet know how. Sometimes just turning your life upside down, like my ovarian cancer did for me, gives one new perspective. Each person I meet, each place I go, becomes part of my great adventure. My flight back from a university-sponsored trip might interfere with my attendance today. In Antarctica, I am truly upside down by Savannah standards and gaining unique perspectives. For example, some of my new buddies, who always dress in style, have suggested a unique way to help me support Morningstar's Teal Ribbon Project, our ovarian and BRCA cancer initiative. Cummerbunds of teal, 
I think they may have something there. Happy 100th anniversary, Girl Scouts, and thank you all for this incredible honor.